Last year in 2023, there were 541 successful data breaches, attacks against healthcare agencies. Now keep in mind the Department of Health and Human Services requires that any data breach affecting 500 or more records must be reported. So 541 were reported last year. That's an average of 1.5 every single day. And a total of 1.6 billion records were stolen. Now why do you care is the question, right? As long as you have identity theft protection, LifeLock, Aura.com, whatever that might look like, being aware, being notified that your data has been stolen, may be available on the dark web, yeah, is that enough? I don't think it is. So we're going to talk about that today, but let's first talk about the overall industry impacts. Let's look at, for example, HCA Healthcare. 11 million people were affected across their hospital network of 182 hospitals, 2,300 total healthcare sites. And you might think when you hear of uh, data breaches in healthcare, you might immediately think of identity theft. Yeah, that can happen. Users can ransom this data, uh, hold the healthcare agencies hostage um, until they receive money and then release the records. And I think, you know, if you've watched the news, all across the country, healthcare systems are being shut down, surgeries being postponed, blood transfusions being postponed. So there's some very nefarious aspects uh, to this whole equation that certainly impact all of us who need regular medical care. Something to be considered. Your records can be sold on the dark web. That's another thing to consider. Um, and they can even impersonate you and get medical treatment. But think about what kind of information is available in a medical health record. Your name, your address, your date of birth and other important dates, dates of surgery, dates of medical care, right? Um, your social security number, again, your medical history, your health insurance information, your financial information, your next of kin emergency contact, even your relatives. Think of all the things that you completed when you did an intake form, when you first went to the doctor's office, and then all the things since that you told your doctor. Imagine all of this information available to cyber criminals. So let's talk about the indirect possibilities. And the reason I recorded this video is the indirect possibilities that I think are most concerning. Your medical records contain a treasure trove, as we just covered, a treasure trove of information about you. And while all the other aspects I covered are concerning, what's most important is to realize that there are four major scam types that can utilize this type of information and really weaponize it against you. Government agency scams, next of kin ransom scams, insurance scams, investment scams. So let's talk about each. I did an episode recently on how bad actors and cyber criminals are using AI, voice creation, phone number cloning, and even video uh, recreation, deep fakes, to pose as government agencies. So imagine you get a call from the Medicare agency that says, we suspect you of Medicare fraud, right? They would have enough information about your medical history, the procedures you've undergone, the loved ones associated, you know, your financial history, everything else, to craft a compelling story. And that's really what scams are about, is creating a compelling story, then introducing the pressure, the threat, and you know, causing you to have to take action immediately, right? So one thing to bone up on and learn a little bit more about is how AI is allowing cyber criminals to pretend to be from government agencies and do these types of outreaches. One of the worst, these are all bad, but one of the worst, if not the worst, is what they call the grandfather, grandmother scam, grandparent scam. And the way that this works is if they know the name of your child or your grandchild, you get a call, very convincing call from a detective, police officer, attorney saying, we have your loved one in custody. And they did a very serious thing. It's not uncommon, and it's going to blow you away, and it's just disgusting. Um, they might say they were involved in a fatal accident. They were drunk driving. 
They killed the other passenger. Maybe she's even a pregnant mom. I've seen many, many cases sound just like this, right? And you need to send money for bail. Now remember, they know everything about you, your addresses, relevant dates. They know your relatives, loved ones. They know your financial history. So it's very easy, again, to craft this compelling story that makes it believable and applies the pressure to you based on the information that they have. Could there be insurance scams? Most certainly there could. Based on your medical history, your patient records, they're going to sound like they may be even from your healthcare agency and they can clone those phone numbers. They can make fake email addresses, websites to make it look convincing to get you to enter a payment or additional information, credit cards, whatever it may be, to use against you and take your money. And then finally, the investment scam. Especially if you have medical conditions, can you imagine playing on the heartstrings of somebody who has a serious and chronic medical condition? Scammers are using this type of information to craft their stories, to make them believable, to give them credibility about the things that they know about you so they can use them against you. Many of the episodes I've done have covered how to protect yourself, but I wanted to record this video just to raise awareness on why this is something we need to pay attention to. Please take the time to educate yourself further on how these scams are enacted, what these scammers do to make initial contact with you, how they position themselves in their stories to make themselves believable, and most importantly, in many of the episodes I've recorded, how to keep yourself safe and protect yourself using sound cybersecurity practices. So listen, when there's a healthcare data breach, I hope you pay a little more attention tomorrow than you may have today. With one and a half happening every single day, it's very easy to tune out. But again, think about the information they gain access to when they employ these tactics and steal this type of data and consider what can be done with it and how it can be weaponized. My name is Philip Mackel. I want to thank you for tuning in. If you got something from this episode, please click the thumbs up button. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Share this with friends and family if you got something from it. And I hope you'll join me on an additional episode, and I hope you stay safe.